We dream of the ice, of our heroes, of making the team. But sometimes, the hardest thing of all, harder than rejection, harder than defeat, is to keep dreaming. We are MLSE. And with Workplace, we can make the dream a reality. We share. We decide. We act. Together. We are the team behind the teams. And together, changes everything. So good afternoon, everyone. Really nice to see everybody back. Um, I'd like to, in turn, welcome the panelists to the stage who are going to be uh, talking on the panel about putting people over pixels. So come on up. All right, excellent. So um, when we were talking before the panel, I think a few of you had asked questions about what, is it, what, what does the title mean, putting people over pixels. So um, I think we'll start there. If each of you could introduce yourself um, and where you're from, talk a little bit about your role, but, um, but also in the introduction, talk about what it means to be um, people-led while tech-enabled. And Emily, we'll start with you. Great. Uh, hi, my name is Emily Monori. Um, I run everything digital for Clarence UK. I've been in the group for eight years. Uh, first in HQ in Paris, I'm French, now living in London. Um, so being people-led, I would say, is making sure that you answer a proper use case. What is it that you're trying to fix? Mm -hmm. And then how can tech actually enable this? Right. If it makes sense. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what is the primary use case that... Uh, our primary use case when we started actually of bringing Workplace as the tech to answer was how can we connect to the front line? How can we be connected to our beauty advisors in stores, which represent, I'd say, 90% of our workforce in the UK, right. who don't have an email, who don't have a, uh, a work phone, who don't have a computer. Yeah. Uh, how can we actually be connected to them? Right. That's what we right. did. We're definitely going to pick up on that in a moment. <laughs> Joe. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Joe Park. I'm with Walmart. I lead what we call the Associate Digital Experience. And it's really all the associate-facing enterprise technology that we have to serve our 2.3 million associates across the world. Uh, one thing about people at Tech Empowered, you know, it's funny, that's a term our CEO uses a lot. Mm. Uh, for us at, at Walmart, it, it means embracing technology fully to empower our associates to better serve our customers with the uh, human touch to make right. sure that we, we retain that. Right. Hi, I'm Pat Waters. I am a mother, a sister, a daughter. I'm an introvert. I happen to run HR for service now. I love <laughs> what I get to do. Um, it's my passion, it's my purpose to help people realize their potential. And a people-led people um, organization and technology is about keeping you in the center of it. What enables you to achieve your potential, your joy while at work to achieve your greatest work ever? Excellent. All right. Well, let's get started. Um, Joe, I'm going to pick on you first. Uh, you're the chief digital architect of the world's largest company. So you get to see <laughs> tons of new technology, right? Yep. 
Um, so h how do you, you know, when, when you're looking at a lot of bright and shiny objects, how do you kind of keep people at the center of these technology choices? Sure, you know, uh, it's, it's tempting. We got a lot of great technologies out there today, but if you lose sight of what it means to actually use it and what it takes, uh, it, it won't work. So when you think about retail, it, it's transforming quite a bit. And when we at Walmart think about the skills that are going to be needed in the future, uh, it comes down to digital literacy, mm -hmm. it comes to having a growth mindset and being a lifelong learner, problem solving, and customer service. Mm -hmm. And boy, without focusing on those things, you're, you're probably not going to figure out the technology piece. Yeah. And so for us, that means providing opportunities for all 2.3 million associates to be able to develop those skills. And what Walmart does is we provide uh, significant funding investments for education and training. A uh, couple examples that come to mind would be in 2016, we launched our training academies. Uh, what that is, it's a two-week immersive course to teach our associates really advanced retail skills mm -hmm. and technology skills. And that ranges from our hourly associate who's come join the company all the way to um, store managers. And for us to date, uh, the results have been great. Uh, we've got 200 of them across the nation, all pretty accessible and 500,000 graduates to date. Wow. For us, that's, that's huge because in many ways for these associates, the people, um, it's the first time they've ever had a cap and gown in their lives. Wow. It's the first time they've uh, celebrated that and they bring their families with them after those two weeks. And you know, a, a virtual trophy, it doesn't match the people side of, of that experience. And the second example that comes to mind is we had a really good experience partnering with Guild Education to provide the accessibility for our associates for a dollar a day to get uh, their way towards college degree, uh, two-year associates or four-year uh, bachelors. Wow. So in Walmart, uh, we believe we're going to use technology to compete, but our associates are what's going to help us win. Amazing. Absolutely awesome. amazing. Um, Pat, I want to ask you a, a question that, that's similar, but um, you talk a lot about using the kind of customer journey and the customer experience, but turning that, turning that inward to look at the employee experience. And maybe if you can talk a little bit about how you embed technology as part of that um, em employee journey or that employee experience, I'd love to hear more about what you guys are doing. Sure. So um, when you think about the employee experience, it's holistic, right? Mm -hmm. And so it starts off with your business it's the culture, what's your employee value proposition that you're trying to create for your employee base. And then uh, it's manifest and supported through the systems and tools we provide our employees. And then it is uh, reinforced through the environment in which they work, right? So the physical and the digital as well. And so if you take as much effort in defining what that employee journey is from courting you, so you fall in love with my company and the opportunity, to when I onboard you and you know you're the most important thing for me that day, to those moments that matter when you transition along your career path with my company, to realize your potential and your dreams. Technology is the underpinning of all of that. And if you take that same energy you would for the customer support to your employees, magic happens. And yeah. so you craft your architecture and you look at your tools, and you look at the signals that you're trying to capture and see if your engagement's up. And I partner very closely with our CIO and our product team and finance and facilities and say, these are the moments that matter as you go through your journey. Mm. These are the tools that you'll interact with. Now in the heart of that whole exchange of that journey is how I want you to feel. And that's what I measure. I want you to feel excitement. I want you to feel engaged. I want you to feel a sense of belonging. I want mm. you to feel a sense of accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. When you get promoted, like every first time manager is a kludgy manager, we all suck. And so how do you take that moment and make it a beautiful <laughs> moment? Right, so I feel confident, I feel supported, and tools and training and insights and feedback are yeah. a great gift. And so technology enables me to be a better version. Do those become your metrics, those, those moments, those feelings? Yes, and so, Interesting. so Chris Betty, our CIO, yeah. he laughs, because we've only been working together a year now, and he goes, Pat, I think of downtime and, and um, time to fill and cost and efficiency metrics, and you talk about a beautiful process, and you talk about engagement, and you talk about smiles, and I go, well, that's the energy I want the employee to feel. Yeah. I want the smiley, I want the thumbs up, I want the engagement to give me a signal of emotional energy. And that's the magic for me. That's really cool. Um, so, so all of you have 
frontline employees in some way. You know, sometimes they're the store associates, sometimes they're the remote employees. Um, I think maybe, um, Emily, if we can start with you and talk a little bit about the work that you've been doing and Clarence has been doing to connect the front line um, with the office and just how that has benefited so the brand, yeah. The initial idea was how can we create this two-way communication? Mm -hmm. uh, how can we, you know, be in contact with them, not just by sending, him, sending them a memo printed to store and then maybe hearing from their business managers who talks to the area manager, who talks to the commercial director, yeah. who talks to, and having those silos broken and making sure that communication is actually direct. And it went, I mean, it's magic. The workplace effect has been incredible. Um, 2,000 employees in the UK, I said 90% are uh, non-office based and we have an 87% engagement. Wow. And 82% wow. connecting weekly, wow. posting, liking, commenting. So they've been, I mean, we've given them a voice and they've just jumped on it, absolutely jumped on it. And initially, I really thought, I mean, the business case was, you know, we're gonna talk to them, they're gonna talk to us. Yeah. It's gonna be, you know, this two-way thing. Actually, what has been much bigger than anticipated is the peer-to-peer -peer connection. Really? Um, we've got some accounts, I mean, all across the UK and all the department stores, and some are actually single accounts. So you've got one QT advisor on her own who maybe sees her area manager once a month. And now she's sharing what she does. She's getting inspiration from someone in Brighton, in Manchester. And it's they feel part, and that's the word that they say, they feel part of a, of a community. Yeah, that we felt existed, but actually didn't. Yeah. Um, so yes, it's it's been win-win all over. Did Did you sense that at all, or was that just like a, a happy accident that you? I think you saw? we were so yeah. focused on answering the need because when we did an engagement survey eighteen months ago, they felt disconnected with mm -hmm. the head office, and that's what we tried to fix by launching mm -hmm. Workplace. We didn't anticipate the peer-to-peer -peer option. Amazing. Yeah. So that was the, uh, yeah, the happy yeah. end. I'd like, I'd like to, to stay on this for a minute too because um, this is the type of, of magic that we love to hear about, but um, I, can you talk a little bit about how, how that's quantified or how that's measured or how do you look at the kind of business uh, value of that? The impact, well, yeah. early days, we launched uh, five months ago, um, but We've seen, and I'll caveat that figure, yep. but we've seen uh, a reduction in employee uh, turnover by four points since we launched. Wow. But I'll caveat with the situation in the retail in the UK. Um, if you're not familiar, House of Fraser has been bought, Debenhams is, is having some difficulties. So most of our big retailers are in a difficult position. So it might also be explained, but I believe not to the extent of the four points. Uh, by people wanting to hold on to their jobs. But yeah. th it's been, honestly, I've, I, before I came here, I posted on Workplace saying, guys, I'm going to San Francisco. I'm going to see the Workplace guys. What shall I tell them? Do we like it or don't we? And it's like, just tell me, thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you want? What do you think? And I've had like comments all over, thumbs up, you know, big time. We just love it. It's changed our lives. Yeah. Uh, we're addicted to it. I've got someone saying, I actually look at Workplace more than Facebook now. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> honestly, um, and most of all, it's like, and whenever Debbie, Gillian uh, mentioned it this morning, but whenever Debbie likes or comments, it makes their week, their month, I mean, it's yeah. just, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's something really magical just about right it. It's right there. Yeah. It's right there, and it's, again, we, we were, fearing that the engagement would drop at one point. You know, when everything goes too well, yeah. you're kind of like, okay, how long is it going <laughs> to last? But it's not every week, it's like one point, one point. So now we're like, oh, 70%, yeah, we're right. We're, we're aiming for the 90, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that, I mean, that's Fingers a great story. story. <laughs> yeah. Joe, jo, maybe we can pick up a little bit um, with the observations that you have, the difference in kind of building culture, because you're doing it both um, in the offices, but you're also doing it in some of the SANS clubs. Can you talk a little bit about that difference of building culture sure. out you, in the field? Versus yeah. yeah. You, you know, at Walmart, when it comes to culture, whether you're in the field or in the office, um, listening's always been a big part of our culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes all the way back to our first stores with our founder, Sam Walton. Uh, he'd go store to store to store, 
take a yellow notepad and jot down ideas from any associate he could, and, and occasionally from competitors. <laughs> uh, uh, but when you go to today and you have 2.3 million associates and five generations of workers in the office or in the field, uh, that's not scalable. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I'd argue without technology, you can't get that feedback um, and listening that we're so proud of in our culture. And so for us, uh, it, it's pretty practical. What we try to do, whether it's the field or the knowledge workers, it's, it, it comes down to leveraging product management practices, uh, treating our associates like a customer, collecting feedback, and using research. And when you put all that together, uh, workplace, you know, I'll, I'll share a little love there too from Walmart. It's uh, the product decision to use it for the enterprise was because when you take a look at all the technologies you could pick from, and to even the, the playing field, whether it's generational, location-based, right. you name it, uh, geez, it's, we could spend all this time going through change management, the training, yeah. the customizations, but when it comes down to it, uh, Workplace for us gave us a common platform, common language. Facebook invested 15 plus years of R&D into it for free for us. <laughs> ah, yeah. And we get to selfishly turn it on and everyone, <laughs> all five generations know how to use it. Yeah. And for us, uh, we spend more time liking, loving, crying, laughing versus don't know how to use it. It's a barrier. Yeah. And for us, that's, uh, that's been terrific. That familiarity across five generations yep. is pretty powerful. Um, Pat, if we could talk a little bit about what you're doing to use technology to build culture, because you, you have a lot of remote workers, right, who yes. are on their own. Can, can you share more about that? So one of the challenges we had as we're scaling is to bring their voices into the organization so they felt they belonged to this company that was amazing. And our CEO and some of the executive team went out and did a purpose tour this past spring and launched a new brand for the company and what is our purpose and our vision and mission as an organization. And we got to meet a bunch of amazing employees. And what we kept hearing is the remote worker and the voice. And so we had already launched, um, we call now at work, and uh, we were starting to gain some traction in the workspace with that. But what we started realizing the magic was when we did live events. And so you had people around the world just dialed in into these events and engaging during the event. And my aha moment was in the spring after we did this tour, I did a lunch and learn event for our employees. We're talking about diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and trying to educate. And there's about 100 people in the room like, this is a great size. I feel good, about 100 people. And they were like, online, you've got about 60. I'm like, 160, score. And so I was confident. I'm rolling, I'm engaging. We had conversations going on on live at work and conversations kept going and there was more engagement and, and I'm like, this is an amazing moment. And at the end of the event, they're like, that was incredible. We had over 600 people live. Wow. And they were dialoguing and we yeah. did some peer to peer conversation about question about your story, about when you had a belonging moment. And what was happening is our peers were engaging on this live platform and sharing very personal stories about their feelings, about their moments, and those stories end up, you know, teeing up other conversations and other levels of awareness for managers and individual contributors. So the live audience actually got way more value almost than the folks that were actually in the room. And my, my head almost blew. I'm like, that's an incredible tool that I've never before had an advantage of in my well, career. What, what's interesting is both of you have told these stories now about peer-to-peer, -peer and it wasn't, it wasn't the kind of primary use case going in, right? It was this serendipity um, that you observed. That's really neat. M maybe we can stay on you, Pat, for a moment and talk a little bit about your, your role itself. You know, you're the chief human resource officer. That's not typically a role that's associated with technology. <laughs> uh, but can you, you know, can you talk a little bit about how your role itself is changing and what you think it means to be a modern CHRO now? So, for me, it is about crafting that unique employee experience. I mean, we're here to help my mission wherever I work, is to build a high-performing, healthy company that can scale or achieve its business goals. In order to do that and stay agile, you do need a growth mindset, but you need technology that serves the business needs, and you need to have a great line of sight into your talent. And so if you think on average, a company's operational expense, 80% is the cost of talent. Mm -hmm. Systems and tools are mm -hmm. part of that equation. 
And if you think about that expense line item, you got to make sure you see their engagement. It's not just a periodic survey. It is about are they getting learning bites? Are they engaged in the tools? Are, are you communicating and having a cascade and understood? And so with now at work even, I can tell you if my engagement is really there in the moment. I can tell you if my leaders are actually downloading my PowerPoint and getting the information yeah. on change management about these comp changes we're rolling out. And I can capture their questions and create knowledge bites that serve them around the world. That is powerful stuff. So for me, technology is an enabler of a creating a healthy company. It's mm -hmm. also a way to anticipate needs. So you get signals in an organization. And for me, it's my health heat map. Yeah. And so technology helps me hunt for that heat map. I don't know how I would do my job without it. Yeah, got it, okay. You, you use the term change management. Maybe we can pick up a little bit on that because, um, you know, it, it, how, how much change management have you had to do with moving people um, from just using traditional tools like email into more of these um, networked tools, connected tools like, like Workplace? So I think, um, as described earlier, Facebook is so known. So it mm -hmm. wasn't like training on the tool. Yeah. It was training on a behavior mindset and shifting people away from an email or this is how you use Slack and this is what email's use case is for and this is how you have a hallway conversation off your device even. Like how do you communicate in an organization? And what we discovered early is that we would do communication from the CEO about all hands or the um, quarterly results and not put any information that email would just flow them into uh, now at work. Like, if you want to know how your company's doing, you should go here. And so we, we started training the organization to know that the real knowledge, the real information, the celebration of products, of sales, of customer, of our employees are happening on now at work. So a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to know what's going on, go here. <laughs> and now you don't have to do these teasers as much. Um, and then you have uh, important notices. So if I actually am leading change, I can make sure that it gets to the stop, you know, top of the rank of you need to pay attention, please open, please go here. Yeah, great, great. Joe, yep. Yeah. Thought I heard a question from the audience. Um, <laughs> Joe, um, so, so you were talking about the five generations um, that are using Workplace at Walmart and using these tools. And I may, maybe, uh, do, do you have a favorite story um, from, you know, an, any of the five kind of using the tool? You know, it, uh, it spans generations. But if I think about yeah. what's come out of it mm -hmm. in terms of the workplace, uh, my favorite is with the generational differences, um, new associates, let's start there. Coming in, being able to see the history of the evolution of the groups that we have, the organizations that we have, uh, just that persistent memory helps them feel like they're part of the culture day one. And that's a really neat thing to see. Yeah. But on the other end of the spectrum, we've got our tenured associates, the one who've been there for 20, 25, 30 years. And when they're going on and sharing their expertise, being able to find out who's in the organization, welcome them. Uh, it, it happens every day. I can't really point to one story. And, and that's a great thing. You yeah. know, for us, it's, it's become the norm that it's lost its, its novelty. So for us, that's how we know the platform's working when it's not a one-off win, but rather an everyday occurrence. It's a cumulative effect. Right. Right. That's great. Um, so Emily, maybe, maybe we can talk a little bit about um, how you make sure that, that people are influencing the technology choices that you make at Clarence as opposed to the technology driving people's behavior. Again, back to the use cases, how, how can we make people's life easier, I mm -hmm. think, is the, is the basic. And making sure that we don't, I mean, working at the headquarters beforehand and having to use the technology that we have to then try to make sense of it is not the way, and we've discussed this morning, not the way it works anymore. So mm -hmm. what do we need to achieve? And then what is the technology that will make help do that? So. For instance, with, with Workplace, we really want to make it the hub of everything for everyone, so that if anyone has a question, just go to Workplace, they'll find it here. The hub for any policy they might find, the hub for any orders they might need to do, anything is like, this is, this is the place to be. And I think it's with all the connections that you're trying to, to do with the partners, it might 
end up being a reality. Yeah. So, yeah. again, easy, what is easy to use? And, I mean, the, the success, as you said, because everyone knows how to use Facebook, everyone yeah. knew straight away how to use Workplace. Right. And, it's, and it's a no-brainer. Yeah. So the ones that yeah. we kind of forced a bit, you, you cut the other pieces of information, you make sure that this is the place to go to look for information, and then it becomes a reflex. So I'd, li I'd like to I'd like to hear this is this is for any of you and all of you. Um, you're using the tool right now to connect to people, and there's a lot of communication use cases that I'm hearing. Um, wh what would be the kind of next thing that you'd want to to get into from there? Well, so I, I can start. Um, yep. We've we've started with our beauty advisors and our front line. I'd like next year to really focus on the head office and how do we use workplace to work better together, which is most. In most uh, companies I know they've started with this, we've left it for the end. Mm. So that's how I would drive it forward. So you've kind of come from the outside in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, on the technology side at Walmart, because of the volume of associates we have, yeah. uh, we took a look at our data and saw on a yearly basis we have hundreds of thousands of requests for help, whether it's technology help, HR help, it's just really transactional things. Yeah. And what we've done is at Walmart we've launched uh, a chatbot. Uh, for technology services, for HR services, and that's really made improvement. Yep. You know, year over year, I wouldn't give all credit to the platform, but we've seen a 60% drop in informational requests. Really? We've, yeah, wow. we've created product management pages or groups, and we're crowdsourcing all the help. You know, I could try and hire yeah. thousands of people to help answer and help our associates to have a better experience, but yeah. instead we're finding non-technology associates answer each other's questions for pages dedicated to workplace or Zoom or other products. So for us, uh, it's beyond communications. Now it's actually yeah. helping us solve problems. That's really Same cool. Here. Yeah. Do you have a name for the chatbot? We do, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, on, it's a beta right okay. now. Okay, all right. <laughs> TBD. Yep. Um, Pat. Um, I, I was going to just say similar things about the crowdsourcing. So I think that was the unintended aha for me was the ability to share knowledge, the ability to connect the dots, the ability to create this tightly woven fabric because if you're growing so fast, you know, creating a sense of community and that there's people out there that are willing to help me that have been there, done that, and will share their stories so I can learn from your mistakes and your achievements and I can help you be great at X, that to me is the magic. And how do you find those magic moments? How do you codify them? How do you share them? How do you make sure that they don't get lost? Yeah. I think this opportunity is right here, right? Excellent. You, you have been amazing. Thank you so much for this diverse panel. Wonderful to have business, IT, and HR on. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.